Markets were expecting interest rate cuts to be on the table as we entered the year, but with inflation continuing to be sticky, is that a challenge to the story? Joining us now to discuss Scott Colburn, Managing Director and Head of Active Fixed Income at TD Asset Management. Scott, great to have you back on the show. Good to be here, Craig. We're not that deep into 2024 yet, nope. so it's really hard to say how everything is going to play out, but we did have expectations entering the year. And as I take a look at the economic data that keeps coming out, particularly south of the border, Resilience keeps springing to mind. Is this going to be a challenge in terms of the, the narrative we're hoping, I think, might come to pass this year? Yeah, I think we've seen some pushback on the enthusiasm that we finished at the end of 2023, right? So uh, when we look at the last you know, three prints on inflation, U.S., Canada, U.K., uh, this morning, you know, it's a little stickier, as you, uh, as you noted. And I think the enthusiasm that we saw at the end of last year when we, we got the Fed pivot, uh, we've had some good, we had good inflation, we had a, a, a cure, you know, the quarterly refunding ad that it provided a lift to Treasury yields as well. All that gave us sort of that tailwind that we really had a great finish to uh, 23. And we're just dialing back that enthusiasm. Uh, I don't think the, the narrative of rate cuts is going to go away. It's just more uh, the timing, right? So inflation a little stickier, led by shelter and, and, um, and, and services. And on the other side, sort of goods deflation and energy deflation, giving uh, you know, a balance to, to inflation. So what we've seen uh, is some of the, the central bankers out there saying, look, uh, you know, it's not, we're not pushing back on rate cuts yet. Uh, in fact, you know, both the Fed and, and the ECB, you've seen uh, acknowledgements of rate cuts this year, but maybe it's the timing. And so we've gone from a 85% uh, chance of a cut in March to maybe now a 50% chance of a cut, which given the probabilities and distributions, that, that seems like a, a fair handicap. I don't think they'll cut in March personally, but I think that is you know, just the, the, the dialing back of the enthusiasm. And we're seeing that as you, as you noted, bond yields are up uh, over the last uh, few, few sessions and it's just taking back that enthusiasm. Um, but I do think we're gonna have rate cuts this year for sure. Uh, global growth X US is meh uh, <laughs> at best. You know, you've got energy prices pretty, um, you know, lackluster. Um, if you look at the inflation swaps market, uh, which is something we, you know, we can actually trade inflation uh, on a month to month basis. It says, you know, you're going to see, you know, core inflation around two and a half percent by the second half of this year. Um, you know, I think when you think of the, the, the Fed and the reaction function, uh, it's not going to wait until it gets to 2% before it cuts. So it just has to feel we will get there. We're, yeah. we're on that path and we're more confident. And, you know, the recent data just sort of, uh, you know, it, it dials back the recent uh, cuts. The, the last uh, most recent fresh piece of data we've said, I find a million ways to say it, it landed today. <laughs> it was retail sales. I never know how to take the December number because I know personally I might head into the holiday season saying fiscal discipline, blah, 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 but it's the holidays. You yep. end up opening the wallet and when you take a look at how much you spent, you go, whoa. But, but it was a resilient number. Is it surprising that the U.S. consumer in particular has been able to look at higher borrowing costs, look at a certain economy and say, <laughs> hey, I'm just going to keep on spending? Yeah, it's been a consistent theme, yeah. right, through 23. And so to the extent that it continues at the margin that uh, the U.S. consumer surprises us a bit, uh, I guess we shouldn't be uh, surprised. But I think uh, broadly speaking, you know, the, uh, the weight of global growth, um, you know, will, will weigh on, uh, on inflation. And I think that, you know, we'll probably see uh, okay U.S. growth. And, you know, that data is consistent with that. But perhaps reflecting what was priced into the market. That's why you're getting a pushback in yields that uh, you know, maybe we, we expected a lot uh, softer growth and, and it's just a, a, it's a pushback against expectations. Now, when it comes to fixed income investing, of course, people have an idea about interest rate cuts on the horizon, when they might come, what it could mean uh, for their fixed income portfolios, but also the fact that we're seeing these yields still at, at fairly high levels. Now, you put all of this together, what does it actually mean for fixed income this year? I think it's a great year, right? I mean, you, you're talking um, depending on where you are investing in the yield curve, right? Or what type of solution you have, uh, you know, for 
four and a half to five and a half percent or six percent all in yields. Uh, you know, sometimes you take it with duration, sometimes you take it without. Um, if you take it with duration, you could, I believe that you're going to see maybe another 50 basis points rally over the course uh, at some point uh, this year. And so that gives you another, you know, uh, you know, a couple percent in terms of a total return. So you could, you know, have high single digit returns in fixed income. Uh, at worst, you're going to have sort of a, I, I believe, like a coupon type of a year. And, you know, um, based on, you know, where we were at the lows of, uh, of the pandemic, uh, income in, in the 4 to 6% range is, is reasonably good. So it still uh, makes sense for your portfolios, absolutely. Will that be enough to get the investors who have been in cash and who have been cautious? Uh, all through 2023, I kept hearing about the amount that people were in cash or in the very short end of any fixed income instruments. Uh, a little more, perhaps, uh, courage to step in in, in in a more profound way. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, that cash will eventually um, go to other places when there's, you know, when they're nudged. And when are they going to get nudged is when they they see central banks ultimately cutting. So maybe, you know, we've got another uh, a third of the year to go through uh, uh, before we get to, um, you know, a significant movement out of cash. But, uh, you know, uh, for the time being, whether it's cash or short corporates or a long duration asset, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's home for uh, fixed income uh, investors this year. If we're taking a look at risks this year, obviously there's geopolitical risk, there's right. uh, maybe political risk even in the United States. There's, there's a lot of moving pieces this mm -hmm. year. What, what do we need to think of from a fixed income perspective? We say the base case is we expect at some point we're going to get some rate cuts, you're already getting this coupon. What could mess us up? Good question. I think there's a couple things I'm looking at. One is commodity prices. What is it really telling us, right? If we continue to see uh, despite, you know, resilient U.S. growth, uh, a weakness in commodities, is it telling us something about demand? Is it telling us something more about, um, you know, uh, further weakening in the, in, the, in the global economy? And so I, I don't know at this time, but it's something I'm keeping a, an eye on. And the other thing I think from a, a fixed income point of view in portfolio construction, I look at three things. One, you know, it's liquid, right? So you can, you can shift from fixed income to cash, to alts, to, uh, to equities. That's always there. We've got income, and we just talked about that, but it's the correlation between equities and fixed income. And in a high inflation env environment, which we've been through, uh, that correlation breaks down and that hedging value breaks down. And there's, you know, not a natural demand for fixed income if risky assets go down. As we go into a lower inflation environment, we expect that correlation to go back up. If it doesn't, that's a risk given, you know, how much governments like to, uh, to finance their, their debt through the bond market. That is a risk for me as a, as a fixed income investor. That bid for bonds uh, might not be there. And that's a risk beyond the, the traditional geopolitics that we're talking about.